Hi friends, hope you're doing well. I'm Dr. Malin Chinde, MD Pediatric from AIMS Opal. So I welcome you all in another video of our next preparation series. So today we are going to talk about how to make a plan. Because whenever you are approaching any competitive exam, it's very important to have a long-term plan and a short-term plan. Because without plan, we will be totally clueless that where are we going and uh, whether, whether we will be able to uh, reach our goal or not. Very importantly, this uh, next exam that is going to come. So it is also going to be a competitive exam like other NEET PG we had. So in any competitive exam, you have to start early, you have to plan well, and you have to decide the approach. Now, a uh, lot of people say that in any competitive exam, lot of there are a lot of people who are very intelligent. There are people who are gold medalists during their UG days. So it's not only those students who are going to crack this exam, but with your, plan, uh, your smart planning and introducing few uh, important techniques in your preparation and priority, prioritizing the high yield topics and high yield areas, you can definitely uh, succeed uh, in your goal. Also, it needs a lot of determination and a lot of uh, uh, consistency whenever you are uh, preparing for such exam. So today I'm going to uh, share with you that how to, how can you formulate a timetable uh, for your next exam? So this is generally, uh, this is a uh, generalized skeleton. I will release another video where I will make a timetable as per your current UGF or if you are an intern. So this is a generalized scheme to just give you an idea that if you are planning your uh, timetable, if, if you want to make a timetable, how can you formulate? So let's start. So first of all, to make a plan, we should know the subject. So as we, in my previous video, I have discussed the skeleton of the exam that how exam is going to be. So we have to, if if I have to divide the subject, I have divided them into six categories. So first we have medicine and allied sub, uh, sciences. So which is for 120 marks, which has medicine itself and psychiatry, dermatology and radiology. In surgery and allied sciences, we have surgery plus orthopedics and anesthesia. Also we have uh, this all three for 120 marks. Then we have obstetrics and gynecology, which is only the subject for 120 marks. Then ENT, ophthalmology, pediatrics, 60 questions each. And basic sciences and uh, preventive uh, medicine and public health, that is for 10% of the question paper. So that is the distribution that has been given in the draft. So we are still awaiting a final uh, release, final notification, but that, this is the general approach. So how can we apply these things in our uh, timetable? How can we apply these things smartly in our preparation plan? So there are two types of learning that we do. One is integrated learning. What we do, we is, uh, integrate similar topics from different subjects. So that is integrated learning. And second is subject-wise, that you finish one subject and you then jump on to another subject. So if you see the kind of subject we are having, so integrated, if you are a UG st uh, student, integrated learning can be very uh, helpful for you. And if you are someone that who want to do the integrated learning, because when you have a, when you take an integrated approach, it helps you understanding the subject. It will help, it will make you clearer that you will retain it for longer and the concepts will be cleared in your mind. So if you're planning for inter, uh, integrated learning, I'll advise to combine this subject. So you can uh, combine medicine with physio, patho and pharma. You can combine relevant part. Like if you have read CVS from physio, you can read its pathological things in uh, like CVS path and then followed by medicine. And you can, these three, three combined, you can, you will knowing uh, the disease entity in depth and then pharma. So how to treat this particular. So if you do this integrated learning, you'll understand it better. Infection part of medicine, you can combine with microbiology. So this will again save your time and give you a good idea. In surgical branches, like you start with anatomy and then combine it with surgery, radio and orthopedics. So this can also be a good integrated uh, approach or a good integrated group. Then we have uh, separate things like they are not, you, know, you cannot combine them. They don't complement each other, but now they are the third uh, left or group. So one is obs gyne, you can combine it with anesthesia and also preventive uh, and social medicine with public health so that you can add pediatrics and biochemistry. Now this, some people might think that it's very weird combination, but if you uh, note a lot of uh, diseases in pediatrics, like in inborn, inborn error of metabolism, genetic related diseases, and there are a lot of things in pediatrics and they have a very good overlap with biochemistry. So if you combine your uh, biochemistry with pediatrics and pediatrics again has a good advantage in uh, your uh, next exam. So if you combine this subject, then a lot of uh, things can complement each other in biochemistry and pediatrics. Because genetics also has a very important role in pediatrics. So these combined these two, two subjects can give you a better integrated approach. And then the last subject, actually, they don't complement each other, but they are the left or like ENT, ophthalmology, psychiatry, derma, and FMTs. So that this subject can be taken uh, care in the end. So how to formulate a timetable? So first, I will divide subject into two groups. 
So one will be rank building subject and one is rank deciding subject. So actually, I have uh, done lot of videos for NEET PG examination. Uh, and in NEET PG, I used to divide subject into three categories. So that is rank building, rank maintaining, and rank deciding subject. But in next, we have a completely different scenario. We have more of a clinical based approach. We have the clinical subject have taken a front seat, and basic sciences and other subjects have taken a back seat. So what will be your rank building subject? So what is when I say rank building, what uh, do I mean? So Whenever you are writing a exam, so next one score will give you a rank, and as per that rank, your PG set will be decided. So rank building is sub subject or the subject that will bring you in the top most rank. Let's say one lakh students will give the exam, so rank will subject will bring you in the top twenty thousand. Let's say top twenty thousand students. So in this scenario, what we have seen that medicine and allied sciences, surgery and allied sciences, and basic sciences. So these are the subject who are going to the command, and if you read them well. these are going to bring you in top 20000 so these are your rank building subject so first you have to take care of this subject first you have to uh, concentrate on this subject then what will be your rank deciding subject now you once you have reached your, in your top <clears throat> let's say uh, 20000 now as you have seen that pediatric this four subject just these four subjects constitute a uh, constitute a major chunk of your uh, uh, number of uh, question distributed Like pediatrics has sixty, ophthalmology sixty, so one eighty questions from here plus uh, nearly three hundred questions you will get only from these four subject if you see. So any student who is going to have a good command on these four subject is going to go higher in the rank. So this subject will decide a higher uh, position of your rank. So you have to uh, plan this subject in such a way that you have to finish your rank building first, followed by rank deciding. So you will get a definitely higher rank like. in top 5000 you will definitely come so this is how uh, i will advise to divide your subject so you can formulate your uh, time table now first of all talking about the long term planning so long term long term planning is suppose for example lot of students are having their exam in february so after that you will be uh, free uh, and then you can start your making a plan so i have given example from march so first of all subject versus integrated learning so whenever you make a long term plan you can do both you can do subject wise also integrated also so how to do it i'll tell you in the next uh, slide so whenever you have to uh, when when should one go for integrated learning so if you think your concepts are weak if you think that you are have difficulty answering a clinical kind of scenarios then you should go for integrated learning because it is better for understanding when you integrate multiple subject you understand them better but when to go for subject wise approach when you want to finish the talk, uh, subject when you want to finish the uh, portion rapidly you have to go for the subject wise because what happens when you do the integrated learning like you have studied 20% of path 20% of pharma 30% of physio then it becomes difficult to keep a track of what is left and what you have read but when you do subject wise you just finish one subject keep that aside and move on to another subject so that becomes a, a bit easy also whenever you make a plan whenever make your schedule whatever i am telling you or whatever anyone else is telling you don't have to follow that blindly you should know your own strength you should know your own weaknesses you should know what subject troubles you the most you should know what is your uh, plus points and minus points so whenever you make a plan you should uh, consider the strength and weaknesses so here i give one example that how should be how should you plan suppose if you are planning from the march then how should uh, how can you go for it like how can we uh, this is just an example so the students who are planning because next 2023 is there uh, it is supposed to be in the march the students who are going to appear for it and who are uh, preparing in that way so whenever you read so most of us are our source i am going to make another separate video for source that what to read and how to read that will be a completely different uh, video but i'll tell you how to go for it so as you have done some classes or you are already doing some classes and now you have notes so these are your own notes and you have some mcq bank like lot of applications they provide mcq bank or if you are referring to any physical book for your mcq bank so how should you proceed so it will be your first reading so what is first reading so first reading is you go through all the notes or you watch videos and you make your notes or you attend offline class and you make uh, your notes and you read them so this is your first reading first reading is to understand first reading is to get a uh, hold of the all the uh, portion that you try to understand okay and it will be very slow first thing should be very slow because you should understand the topic because next is not going to be a data based exam there will be lot of clinical questions so it is very important to read it slowly so i have allotted 5 months from march to july for first reading so what i will say that you can 
give integrated approach when you read first and if you want to give integrated approach use it mainly for the basic sciences with medicine surgical sciences and other uh, subjects i don't think integrated approach would be of main, much uh, helpful you can just go subject wise in that category but for basic sciences and medicine you can integrate them for better understanding and to yield a better result so for when you are uh, doing your first reading integrated approach can be very helpful now about mcqs now whenever we do your, our ug we get a very small like even in our semester exams we have like five or 10 of mcqs but it's mainly theory and viva based now suddenly there is a change of pattern now you have so many mcqs so you can start solve whenever you are reading when you finish one subject you can do the subject wise mcqs see in neat pg exam my ideology was a bit different i used to uh, advise against subject wise mcqs but then now things have changed and we have to be responsive to change so you can do subject wise change uh, subject wise mcqs along with your first reading what this will help you this will give you idea what kind of questions are being asked this will help you in revising as well that what you have read and how much you remember so and you have time like one year is a good time for edpg exam preparation so as you know now what are the mcqs and what kind of mcqs are being asked so you can be prepared for that so you should combine these two together and once you start putting into these hours into studying five months will be more than enough to finish all the subjects that are required now once you are done with your subjects what should be your source main notes i'll be releasing another video for that but uh, as of now i'll tell you your notes are enough nothing comes out of the notes so you have to just concentrate and focus on your notes and mcqs now when you start your first revision now you have done the integrated learning you understood the topic you understood the uh, things now the th now from now onwards we are revising it why because now we want to retain it we want to remember it in exam understanding part has been completed so when you start revision you should start subject wise because now our idea is to complete and finish the portion so i will say go for subject wise uh, topic more than integrated in this phase but here you have to revisit your main source do not read filtered topic in first revision you have to go through everything that has you are you already read in the first revision you have to go through all your notes again now you'll, your speed will be higher because already you have read it also this is the time when you start should start giving grant test so initially two or one grant test in a month is adequate this will give you idea because now you have covered all the portion and you start giving your grant test so it will help you in knowing that okay what the how i am attempting a paper and how many mistakes i am doing so these grant tests will help you assess and then that give you also idea of about a real exam so it will be like a real exam stimulus so first revision you can give 3 months or will be enough for first revision see there will always be a, what i am giving is a rough calculation you can always add plus 15 days minus 15 days to this uh, time table uh, in that sense now you plan your second revision in november december so again in second revision you should be subject wise again go through everything that is you have read i mean for example if you are reading the pathology now you don't have to read each line you just go through the page okay quick okay. and you can read fast what is easy not you remember any important point you have come across like you know that cvs path mi changes are again and again asked and uh, like initial 6 7 chapters of pathology about like general path are very important so you will be slow during that uh, part and again you will uh, stress more on the highlighted part so again you have to go through that and now what will you do that you already have done your <clears throat> you have been doing your mcq bank so wherever wherever you are doing lot of mistakes you can bookmark those questions and in this phase you can just solve those questions which are not in your notes and where you did the mistake you can add this all part in your notes as well so you have to be very selective at the end and you can increase the number of gts that you give in the later part so you can give like 3 gts a month so that will give you idea that where do you stand because now you have finished your uh, all portion almost you have done your first revision as well so you will have a more practice of writing the exam that because first time you are writing such kind of exam so giving gts will give you a confidence then last third revision will be a high yield revision and this will set your rank so this uh, revision again i'll advise subject wise but in this revision now you have to go through the high yield topics high yield topics i will be sharing uh, in the due time that what are the important topics from all the subject so that you have to see that these topics are not like they are not untouched and you are revisiting them again again then you have to make a lot of charts so this is the time when you revise these charts so charts will be the volatile topic the topic that gets evaporated like for example some drug of choices some classification that you are not able to remember you just make a chart and you have to just keep revising the charts in the end and highlighted points from your notes so this is what you have to keep for the third revision so this is basically a mugging up stuff because after two revisions you will remember lot of things after first reading and then two revisions you will remember lot of things 
you don't have to worry much only you have to worry about those things which are very volatile who re- request your uh, attention again and again so you can you can attribute last two months for that and again you can keep solving your gts this is a roughly plan one year plan that you can uh, apply definitely this is not something a gold standard you can do your changes you can also uh, make uh, modifications as per your uh, plan so here i have given one roughly uh, rough idea that if you are planning a schedule like you know yes definitely if you are intern or you will be having clinical posting so you will have to find a time where you will study so like in march you can plan the subjects which are similar like as i, as I said that integrated subject like you can read cvs from physio path and medicine and one added subject that is dharma from the other side which is a short short subject so you can finish plan to finish these four subject in in the month of march so you can uh, if uh, like physio to read all physio needs you uh, and you can combine two subject like you can uh, read if you are getting let's say 6 to 8 hours daily to uh, uh, apart from your posting if you are getting 6 to 8 hours you can study like 4 hours of medicine and 4 hours of physio or path or 6 hours of medicine if you feel that requires more uh, time but you can divide your time according your 5 plus 3 that will be also a good time and definitely if you and initially you have to read slow it will take time and what i'm saying that if you start on 1st of march it it's not like that you will be able to finish 31st of april or 31st of march you might you the this might will be extended till april 10th that's acceptable you don't have to see that what i am i have made that is this will be strict to follow you can make changes as per your requirement suppose you start here from 10th and april that is also acceptable because we have time then in the april you plan for micro then infectious diseases related to medicine so here you can skip the medi- infectious part of medicine you can add here and then pharma because uh, pharma is again will be related and then radiology so you will finish your full subject because radiology is short it's a kind of short subject it will be finished in very less time so this will give you accomplishment also that okay i am able to finish one subject i have finished so that will give you a idea okay i am able to cover my portion in may like you can complement anatomy with surgery then orthopedics and anesthesia this subject you can plan for june biochemistry and pediatrics i have given you reason why biochemistry and pediatrics can be integrated followed by ent in psychiatry and then left uh, subject are ophthalmology psm obs gynae and fmt so as i said that obs gynae pediatrics ophthalmology and ent so these four subject are again very important so you have to give more and more time to them so this is a roughly idea how you should you can make a, a long term schedule and then for revision you can again plan the subjects then coming to the daily schedule so this is like for how next month you are going to formulate your time table in daily it will definitely depend on your routine like at what time you get up at what stage you are if you are mbbs student you will be you will have to go to clinical postings classes or like if you are intern you will have to go for your posting if you are post intern you might have a free time so you have to smartly plan your hours that where uh, you are working also a lot of students will be doing their uh, classes also video classes so you have to find time that where you can study you have to combine this class hours plus theory plus mcqs i'll be sharing another in another video i'll make this uh, particular time table also about a day that how can you divide if you're doing classes or internship everything but i'm giving you one roughly so like for example in morning hours you read theory because morning hours is the time when you written maximum if you think you can read better in the evening you can definitely read in the evening as well in afternoon hours you can see the video classes because most of the times after may we are not very motivated or we don't want to read theory seems boring and you feel very sleepy So video classes can help you get over that and if you are an intern or if you are someone who is working already or like for example you are sitting in a lecture but you are not interested so that time also what you can do you can solve mcqs because mcqs does not need prolonged concentration you need your focus only for that mcq then for example if you are intern you are filling some form so you fill the form then you give you know you are free or like night duty you are doing so you are just doing the monitoring of the patient so in like after each one hour you have to do the monitoring so you will finish your monitoring in 10 minutes next 50 minutes you are going to sit so keep solving mcqs so that will give you idea uh, that will because mcq needs focus only for that time so whenever you are busy when you are working you can complement that with mcqs so that's all guys about uh, how to plan and preparation in upcoming videos i'll be addressing about what is what should be your source of preparation also year wise plan for indian medical graduates and foreign medical graduates and how can you plan your studies also which review books standard books if needed to follow during this period uh, offline versus online coaching and uh, test and discussions and approach to subject wise test and grant test for next so these are all videos and if you have any suggestion for me that uh, which uh, issues and reasons you want me to address in next videos i'll do that so i wish you all the best keep uh, dreaming keep believing and i hope you all succeed in your uh, dream so guys take care and all the best